You've written a lot about ghosts, about haunted houses over the years, and this book is no exception. Um, but then you've said that you don't really believe in ghosts. Right. So, well, so somebody said to me there? that there, there's some version of the house I grew up in, which was an allegedly haunted house, in everything I've written. So mm -hmm. in some early novels, there was like an abandoned high school. Uh, in this one, there's an abandoned prison. In a memoir that I wrote, there's a memoir that's set in that spooky house that I grew mm -hmm. up in. Yeah. Um, I'm fascinated with the idea of haunting because, um, for one thing, I just love ghost stories. Um, I think everybody loves ghost stories on some level, but um, it's also haunting to me. It's a really interesting metaphor for the way we, well, for a couple things. Um, one, the way we occupy our bodies. We are in some ways ghosts um, haunting haunting the, the, the haunted house of, of the mm -hmm. bodies that we live in. Um, I also think of haunting as a way of thinking about um, the way we deal with our own past, especially if you've had something happen in your life that you never really get over. Whether it's something incredibly traumatic or something that's really great, you can sometimes get stuck at that moment of before and after. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, when, you th when I think of people who are haunted, I think of people who are always being taken back to that moment when something happened mm -hmm. uh, they can never quite get over. Or in some, in some cases, um, people are haunted by a moment when they, when they didn't make the decision that could have changed mm -hmm. their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so th this is an obsession of mine, uh, or it's one of my current obsessions, the difference between the people we are and the people we've been. And how do we make peace with uh, our younger selves, especially as I get older? Um, you, you don't have to be transgender for this to be a thing that you struggle with. But mm -hmm. I, I know that as a, as a woman who didn't have a girlhood, per se, it is weird for me to think um, how I make peace with that boy that I was, mm -hmm. with that, with that um, younger person. And um, for me, the, the answer is through story, through seeing my life as a continuous narrative, mm -hmm. um, and that that narrative weaves the past and the present together. Mm -hmm. I think that's how we... That's how you get rid of your ghosts, I think, is by telling the story. And on a sort of related front, um, you know, the novel begins in the ruins of the Eastern State Penitentiary in <laughs> Philadelphia. And, Have um, you been there? It's such no. a cool place. It's, so this yeah. was a, um, um, a, 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 it's a, a, a real place. It's a prison. It's right near the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It was opened in 1791. It closed in 19. 71 mm -hmm. and um, it, it you know it, it, it's this giant spooky ruin and when I was growing up it was just this kind of shuttered wreck um, and did it have a haunting presence in um, it was childhood? you know I was I, I never went in there when I was a child but but um, it was certainly I mean it's a whole city block of, of this thing that looks like a medieval Prison is. It looks like something out of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Now they run it as a uh, as a museum and as a um, and during the later part of the year as a tourist attraction. They do a thing called Terror Behind the Walls, mm -hmm. which is uh, billed as the the world's largest haunted house inside the, the in, inside the walls of a real prison. Which you so. make great use of in the book. Well, I hope so. <laughs> it, it, but I, for me, I, I remember going there um, uh, a couple years ago more like five or six years ago at this point, and just thinking, first, what a great setting for a novel, mm -hmm. and two, it also got me thinking about the, um, the prisons that people have. It struck me as a, mm -hmm. a you know, kind of an obvious metaphor for um, the way people get stuck inside their own head, the bars that we, you know, that we build for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And again, not just transgender people, but all of us who, who get stuck at a certain point in our lives and can't move on. Mm -hmm. So. I'm, I'm, you know, fascinated by the way people try to get free. How do we break out of our prisons? And I know that mm -hmm. sounds, um, uh, maybe that sounds pompous, but I, th I think it's really true. We, we spend half of our lives building these prisons for ourselves, and then we spend the other half of our lives breaking out, you know, mm -hmm. making, making the break, if we're lucky. Um, and that's certainly been the story of my life, but it's the story of, of a lot of people I know that, mm -hmm. that, um, how do we find our freedom? How do we find a way of being ourselves? Sometimes against great odds. Mm 